Exercise 10, Inventor 2018. In this exercise, we're going to take a look at the freeform tools inside of Inventor, and we're going to try and recreate this bottle that you see right there on the image. So let's begin. Start off with a new part file. Go to Start 2D Sketch, select the XZ plane, and now let's take the line tool and at the origin, click and drag out a line across here, and let's make it 4, and make sure you get the little symbol to the right of your pointer there, that it's, hor um, in this case, vertical actually. Um, it's going to be four and a half inches. Hit Enter then you could hit escape. Okay, now at this point, let's go to the underneath line tool and you'll find there's a couple different types of splines you could use here. I prefer the interpolation spline. I have other people online who like to use the control vertex. Um, I'm gonna go with the interpolation. You could choose whichever one you prefer. I'm gonna go ahead and select this point right here and drag it up a little bit. And again, this is free form. There's not really a whole lot of dimensions I'm using here. We just have a scale set with the four and a half inch uh, line. So go ahead and click. And we're drawing one half of a bottle. And then hit the green check mark when you got that locked in. Now take the line tool and turn on center line and draw two center lines. One here, double click, and one right here, click get it vertical and double click to end the chain. Hit escape and turn off center line. Now what we can do is we could use, there's a couple options. We have tangent or smooth G2. Smooth G2 is the smoothest you're gonna be able to get the transition between this, the center lines as well as the lines. And so let's go ahead and select this curve here and the center line and you'll see it smooths out. And the reason I'm doing this is because eventually this is going to be mirrored over. So we want a nice smooth transition between both surfaces. Uh, so click here and here. All right. Now, after you hit escape, you can even adjust this a little bit more if you prefer. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and hit Finish Sketch. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to select the XZ plane once again. And I'm going to go over here to Plane and Offset from Plane. And we want to offset this 8 inches in height. And you should see it floating up there if you zoom out. Go ahead and select the edge of that and start a sketch. Now we're going to take the line tool once again, but this time be about a quarter of an inch away from the center and click, make sure you're on this line, and drag it across approximately three inches. You could type in three. Now go to the interpolation spline. And right at those points, go ahead and draw in a similar curve and connect. And let's do the same thing as before. The line tool with center line activated, click on this vertex, drag it straight down and double click. Click on this vertex, drag it straight down and double click to end the chain. And I could hit escape. Let's go back to G2 curvature. Be aware as you're adding these, the geometry there, uh, a, G0, a G0 would be basically like a chamfer or straight edge. There's no smoothness between the geometries um, and in this case G2 is like almost uh, one of the smoothest you could get in this software though there are other softwares out there that enable you like for example Rhino 3D and some of the others get to actually use T surfaces or T curves which are the latest and greatest and there's even G3 and G4 conditions of curvature continuity okay so now I'm going to go ahead and dimension between these two points. Oh, and it accidentally selected the center line. It's all right. Let's get 
Okay. And we just wanted a quarter of an inch, 0.25. Okay, now that we have that, let's hit Finish Sketch. We can now make connective guide curves between these. So to do that, let's use this time the YZ plane, start a sketch, and I prefer to go back home up here in the upper right, click on the home button. That gives us an isometric view. And we could go now to the interpolation spline, and oh, actually before we do that, make sure project is on, project geometry, and click on this little point here so we have a reference. Now go back to interpolation spline, and one connection here, make sure you get the little circle that appears, a dot, and then about halfway up, a little bit bowed out, click and then connect here when you get the, like in my case I have the green dot, but that's just because of my settings. And you can see it made a connection. All right, hit finish sketch. Now we have to make one over here as well. So again, start 2D sketch and the YZ plane once again. Go back home in the upper right and project geometry and click on both this point and this one right here to make references and now you should be able to connect those. I'm going to drag this up and in a little bit and have it bow in like that. And let's go to the front view orientation, uh, actually the right view orientation, and here we could see our geometry. And it's looking pretty good. If you don't like it, you could always go ahead and grab some of these points and make adjustments to it and so on and so forth. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and right click on this and turn off the visibility of that plane. And now we could go to loft. Click in sections, click to add section, select the bottom section, and then the top section. Then click in the rails button, click to add, and select both guide rails. Now, if you don't get a preview, that's usually not a good sign. And as you can see, it didn't like what we have. So apparently somewhere I must have geometry condition between one of these splines that it doesn't like. So what I'm going to do is cancel out. And I'm going to take a double look at, uh, double check this. Let's see if we could go back to loft. Select this. Let's select this and we see the transition is nice and smooth. Click in rails. Let's try this one first. Okay, immediately we see that it doesn't highlight. And again, that's an issue. So you could control select or deselect that actually. Select the second guide rail. And neither one seems to uh, be liked by what we have here. So that would indicate to me that it's possible that our geometry is not locked in properly. So let's go back to this sketch right here and edit this. And sure enough, if we look at it normal too, it's not in alignment. Somehow I must have dragged it and moved it. So we have to go ahead and we're going to make these things collinear. So this to that Actually, let's go to um, project, and we could select that, and now we should be able to go back to collinear and make those two collinear, and there we go. It's very important to have nice, clean sketches when you do this type of geometry. Now we should be able to get it to work. Go to loft, and click in sections, click to add, select this one, and then this one, and now the rails, click to add. And there we go. And now it's working. Hit OK. And we now have our geometry, as you can see here. I'm going to rotate with the Shift and the middle mouse button. OK, we want to now make, um, I'm going to go ahead and trim off this top. So I'm going to go back to the YZ plane and start a sketch. And I don't want it flat like that. I'm going to have more of a contoured shape. So with that, I'm going to go to the interpolation spline and click here and here and we're going to trim off that geometry there so I hit the green check and now I could go over here to uh, finish sketch and in 3D model we have split and right here we have trim solid 
The split tool is our actual line we drew and make sure the arrow is pointing up and away and it should cut away that material for us. Okay. All right, and now we want to make our next sketch. So again, the YZ plane, start a sketch. And our geometry is going to come in and exit this way. So we have a handle on this back side. So to do that, again, we're going to use this the curve here, but it might be a good idea to go to wireframe or wireframe with hidden edges. All right, I'm going to start at the bottom and work my way up. So I'm going to click here. And essentially what we're doing is we're making the handle section. Okay. And now I'm going to drag that down a little bit like so. And maybe straighten this out a little bit. Okay. I'm going to hit finish sketch. And now I'm going to go back to view and shade this shade with edges and I'm going to project this on the edge by uh, using the split tool again so go to 3d model go to split and this time split face now the split tool again is the curve we drew and then the face to split is this one on top hit OK and now we have that face split into two sections but we're really here to use this as a guide rail so now we could go ahead and select the underside face and start a sketch. I'm going to rotate this a little bit so we can see it a bit better here. And we're going to go ahead and project that point so we could use it for a circle that we're going to draw. But first, uh, let's go to line and center line. And right at that point, drag a horizontal center line. You can see the little horizontal symbol below the pointer. And we're going to make that point 25. And this is so we could, that's going to be the offset, hit escape, of our circle, the center of the circle. So we go to circle now, and right off that point, we could draw out a one inch circle, just like that. Now we're going to hit finish sketch. And the reason why is if we were to draw that at the center, it might dig in a little deeper than we would want. So I'm just making sure we don't have that issue. I'm going to hit finish sketch, and I'm going to go to sweep and select remove material. The profile it already selected, now it's looking for us to select the path. So I'll click on the path. And again, make sure remove or cut is selected. And hit OK. All right, now if we rotate around, you'll see it didn't quite get this end surface here. There's a little flat surface on there that we have to trim off. Um, usually there is a tool in here somewhere. I wasn't able to find it, but um, it might be in there. If someone knows where it is to where we could get that to go normal at the end, uh, let me know and post that up there. I'd really appreciate it. I'm going to go ahead and select this face and start a sketch on it. And now what we can do is we could go ahead and project that edge like so. And now we could go to circle and right at that center point that it now located for us, we could snap this to that edge. And now we have the matching circle, which we could cut. So go to Finish Sketch. And we're going to go to Extrude, Remove Material, and make sure it cuts down, just like that. Hit OK. And be aware when we go to a fillet here, we might have a little bit of an issue, but we could, we could get that to work. Okay, now for filleting, sometimes it's easier just to fill it as soon as you get it all mirrored. So that's what I'm going to wait for. Um, and let's uh, go ahead and mirror this now. So we're going to go over here to Mirror. And we're going to select the Mirror Solid. And the Mirror Plane, let's rotate this around, is going to be, click on Mirror Plane there, and click on this back face, and hit OK. And now we should have the whole bottle, but we could now fix some of this geometry that might not be suitable for, for filleting. But let's first look at the bottom, and we're going to put some fillets on. So let's go to the um, fillet tool. And when, a, when you're working on a bottle, we talked about G2 earlier, continuity, curvature continuity. We can do the same with the fillets, and this adds a smoother transition. 
versus a, a radius, sometimes if you look under it carefully, it might look like there's a little bit of a dip where the transition takes place at the tangency point. Um, with G2, we don't have that issue. In fact, let's change this to 0.25 for the radius. And over here, we could select Smooth G2 Fillet. Go ahead and click on this edge here and this edge below it. I've seen also where sometimes you could add one to one half if you have difficulty filleting and then mirror it over to the other side um, before you mirrored everything. So there's a couple little tricks um, if things don't work your way. Okay, but there we have our G2 fillet down below there. We could add one at the top here too. We could add these all in one shot as well. I'm gonna only go with a 0.125 for this radius. And I'm gonna select G2. And if you don't get a preview, that's usually a bad sign. So let's click in here. Sometimes adding the opposite end, which I'm unable to do is happening. So what you can do now to get these in, you might want to add fillets on these edges here and over here. Now I'm not seeing a preview, which makes me a little nervous, but through order of operations, we could usually get this to work in this case, I don't think this is going to like this particular one. Oh, it looks like it took. Now we should be able to put this one on. And there we go. We might be even able, although I want to, I don't want this one to be too big. We'll make this next one 0 0.06 down here. And we have to get in that little area there. And then let's see if we can get this one down here. Okay. Now we got it. Let's hit OK. Now if you're unable to get yours, oh look at that, 15, 5 of the 18 selected cannot be blended the same size. Okay. Um, let's accept the successful blends and see what we have left over. Okay, so it took the top one, but it did not take this bottom. So let's see if we could put one on there again. Let's go back to fill it. It's interesting because the preview looked as though it was successful. And let's try with, sometimes, uh, usually you have to go smaller, but we could try larger. And in this case, the larger worked for us. Let's hit OK. All right. And there we have our bottle as it's being developed. Let's put the neck in the bottle. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at the base, the XZ plane, and start a sketch. And I'm going to draw right the center here where I'd want the neck to be. We'll make it one inch. And then if we could, uh, there we go, there's a center. And then this is going to be Point nine. Okay, now if we rotate, we can see them down at the bottom. We just basically made the neck. Now, you can sometimes shell this geometry out. I'll be honest with the complexity of the fillets that we're seeing here. I suspect it probably won't be able to shell. And that's the case with most modelers. They're very difficult um, when they're complex like this. So what we would typically do where I used to work was we would actually model in the bottle on the inside, essentially the same way to remove the material and we'd be cutting it. So um, there's different methods or else you could try shelling in sections as you build it. There's a lot of little tricks, but they're pretty in depth and very time consuming um, in, in many cases. So I'm going to hit finish uh, sketch here and extrude and I want to just select that little ring and I'm going to have it go, let's see, we'll drag that up, see what looks good. Drag it down a little bit. We'll make it 
Okay, and what it did, it ended up cutting the section. I neglected to select Add Material. So right click on this and edit the feature and make sure you select Add Material. Hit OK. Now as far as the thread on the bottle, um, I'm not going to go through that. That's a different lesson altogether. But as you can see here, we have a nice looking bottle or that could be maybe not so nice to some of you. Uh, anyhow, I'm going to go over here and select a material. And I again, as I usually do, I'm going to go with a chrome polished. And then I'm going to go ahead and select these faces here and here with the control key. And I'm going to make those copper. And there we have our bottle. Now to make it look even better, you could go to View, turn on Perspective, and let's go to Realistic. And the Realistic um, just looks phenomenal when you see it. Really adds to it. Let's try Smooth Shaded. And then this, the smooth shaded, actually allows you to dynamically rotate and see the bottle. Uh, whereas the realistic, you have to enable the ray tracing, which takes some time, as you can see down below here. But it does give you a very nice image. I think I'm going to put um, put a different fillet on here, or an additional fillet. and then maybe a little bit at the top there to make it look more realistic in the rendering. So go back to fill it and we'll put in a 0 0.01 right on this edge and this edge. And there it is. Uh, if we go back to the view, there's also, instead of the gray room, you could add like the cool light and this gives it a phenomenal effect and this is actually utilizing the graphics card this isn't a photorealistic rendering it almost looks like it though uh, pretty amazing stuff I not entirely sure if this is due to the actual uh, WX 3100 by AMD or if it's actually um, across the board with most graphics cards that you could get this I'll have to test it but um, this is just a, a beautiful, quick little rotatable model. And that concludes exercise 10.